Hey everybody, it's Aquila the Hun from A Lefty Knitter Podcast, and this is my newest vlog episode, my vlog cast. I don't know what to call these things. I'm really enjoying doing them. <clears throat> now, this is going to be a very light week. I apologize, but we have friends from Florida staying with us, and it's a little awkward trying to vlog when you have nine people in your house. So, you know, and four of them being kids, and they're happily playing and being loud. So, I'm back at work. I'm recording here. I don't want to, again, here's that baby blanket I'm working on. Another one. I want to talk a little bit about the yarn I'm using because I can't say that I'm loving it. Now this is the Mandala by Lion Brand and they consider this a DK weight which I feel like that's pretty accurate. <clears throat> Let me just hold it up for you. I hope that's focused. The part that I don't love about it, the yarn actually I really like. This, the feel of it is not bad. I haven't had many issues with any of it. I feel like the stitch definition is getting lost big time because it's kind of fuzzy. It has a weird halo to it. I'm, I'm not loving that part about this at all. I'm using an H hook. My notes here. I went on Ravelry and I was looking at comments that were made. There were 55 comments about this yarn. <clears throat> 55 comments, but yet 12,523 projects. So that percentage of people that actually left a comment about the yarn on the yarn page is only like a point fourth, a point four of a percent. So it's very low comments. Now, people could have made many more comments on the actual project pages, which is where they probably did make a lot of comments about if they liked the yarn or didn't like the yarn, etc. So here's some cons that I found from the comments page on the yarn listing. Thick and thin spots. Now a lot of these comments were in some of the first comments that were made which were older comments. I have not really noticed that with mine and I feel like maybe they had gotten some feedback about the first outputs of this yarn and fixed it. They corrected it. Because I haven't noticed much of a thick thin um, with my cake. Knots in the yarn. Lots of people commented about knots. I know that drives people nuts. I did not have any knots in this yarn yet, but I am not through my ball. So, I potentially still could have some knots. Bigger problems with the knots is when it changes abruptly in the colors. So you're not getting that nice gradual color change and then it's a big break and you're trying to, to make it work and you're not getting that nice gradient change in your yarn. Uh, fuzzy. Yeah, that's my problem. That's what I don't like. Uh, there's a halo to the yarn and it makes me wonder if it's going to pill. A lot of people did talk about washing and drying this yarn and they haven't noticed pilling so I guess that's maybe a no it's not going to I don't know um, a lot of these comments also were from the beginning comment or when they when the yarn first was introduced it was hard to obtain uh, but I didn't have any problem finding it and in later comments people were talking about they could find it on multiple websites and they could find it in their local Walmart pretty much every time they were there uh, dye spots of one color that were on another color. I didn't have that problem yet, or hopefully not at all. <clears throat> Yarn barf, because they're pulling from the center of the ball. So 
here's my opinion on that. I think if you're pulling from a center pool ball, you're just kind of setting yourself up for some yarn barf. That's my opinion. I personally almost never pull from a center of a ball unless I need to for some reason. One, because I don't like yarn barf, and two, because I don't like when the ball collapses in on itself because that's a whole nother problem. Just my personal opinion. Uh, complaints that the colors aren't in the stripe sequence so that's given on the ball, some of them are missing, or some of them have a longer run in the color, and then the stripe is a lot wider than the other stripes, the other colors. I haven't noticed that, but again, I'm making a crochet baby blanket where it's getting larger and larger and the rows are getting longer, so my stripes are getting skinnier as I go anyway. <clears throat> a lot of the pro comments were that the color changes were nice and the gradients work really well together. It's a great price point and you can get it on sale. It washes well. That the weight of the categorization, which is it's categorized as a DK weight, most people feel that that was pretty correct, except for the people that were getting like the thick and thin spots, which again, I was not having with mine. There were many compliments on the yarn, people saying they love it. There were more positive comments than really super negative comments about this yarn. And even some of the naysayers had, that had negative comments said they would buy it again and use it again. Sorry, I'm getting some crazy focusing issues. I'm not sure why. So I went back and clicked on the 12,000 projects tab and then I went to the search, like the search part of that. And I went and I did a screenshot of the happiness that people were with the project. Now not everybody rated their project because there's only maybe just doing a quick add up here it's like 6,600 people actually rated the happiness of their project out of the 12,000 so that's like half 50% but if you look at this look how many people were happy with it oh it's not gonna focus sorry uh, issues oh there we go most people were really happy or the, the the second to happiest so I feel like that's pretty good numbers again that's kind of just my little review on this yarn take it or leave it whatever you want to do I personally like it I personally like buying yarn like this for projects you're going to be giving to people that aren't fiber friends because the ease of taking care of 100% acrylic is just the best thing to do for somebody, especially somebody with a little baby and they don't have time to be cleaning up spit up from a precious 100% wool garment or blanket. So there you go guys, my review. That might be all you get this week. <laughs> Sorry. I wanted to do a short little video on the crochet blanket that I'm doing, that rainbow ripple baby blanket. I have a, when I was first starting this, I kept screwing up the count and I wasn't sure why. And I have friends who have also had the same issue and so I wanted to kind of show that. Now, I'm a lefty, hold the crochet hook in my left hand so my work goes clockwise. So I'm going to pause here until I get to this here, this top. So this is a free pattern and every third row you're not increasing. So you can see here in these chain twos, these are clusters, I think they call them. So it's 2DC, chain 2, 2DC, but every 
third row, you're going to see this was a two, one, two, this is a two, one, two, and the third one is a single. So every third row, you're not increasing your amount of stitches because the amount of stitches from here to before your cluster should always be the same number on every, every side. And it'll only increase, it'll increase every two rows and then it won't increase. So I'm going to do my... This one's a double, so one, two, chain two, and then I'm going to do one, and two. So now this is where I kept screwing up my count, and this is where I know my friends have also started, they screwed up their count. So I've done my cluster here, and I know I have 14 stitches that I need to do all the way down. <clears throat> where you want to, you want to pull your little cluster over and the next one you're going into is not going to be this one. It's going to be this one, which is kind of in the top of the cluster before. So this is going to be your first one. So there's your one. And then you would finish and do all your 14. So a lot of people mistake this as your first one, but technically this is your first one. So you kind of have to move your cluster over. Let me show you on one that I don't have a cluster in. So you have your two, chain two, two. Now when I do my cluster in here, these, these stitches are gonna get kind of covered up, right? But you're gonna pull those stitches over and this one right here is your first, your first count. So I hope that makes sense. This one here, not the next one. So this one, not this one. And that's how you're gonna get enough stitches to get to your whole edge, to make your whole edge. So I hope that really makes sense. I also want to, when I get to the beginning of the round, make a video, because I, on my first blanket, was doing it wrong and the color jogs, the colors jogged a little funny. So I want to also show that. So there you go. I hope that makes sense. Okay, as you can see, I've gotten pretty far in my blanket. This was the center and it goes out to this color. I'm at now, I, I just keep kind of a marker so I remember where my beginning is. So the beginning of every round, you're chaining two, and that's considered one of your DCs. So here's your chain two. So to connect it, you're gonna still have like one empty here and that's kind of two there. So there's your two that don't get worked. So you're gonna slip stitch into your chain two, which that's, I kept screwing up and I was slip stitching here. Don't do that. Slip stitch into the actual chain two space slip stitches just put the yarn through loop it over and pull it through okay and then the next instruction is to slip into the first DC which is this one sorry I'm doing this watching the video camera oops <clears throat> and then you're gonna do your chain two one And then you don't go back into this same DC, you DC into the next one. And that's how you would start. Now my count would be 15 as I go across, so I would count my chain two right here. And then my first DC is number two, and then I would do 15 into my corner. So there you go. Also, I wanted to make another note about this yarn. I talked in the video that I didn't find any dye spots that had hit other colors. Well, I did find that as I was working it. You can actually see one right there. There, There's not a lot of them, and maybe in another colorway, it's more visible. But in this one, it's not so visible. It's not terrible, and it looks okay. See, there's another one. And I can kind of understand the thick and thin, but I don't think it's so drastic of a thick and thin that it's a problem. So also, I should have thought about this when I bought my two balls. My first ball, I did it from the outside, started with the darkest color. So 
I am not going to cut and do all kinds of crazy color matching. I am just going to start from the outside of this ball too, which has some of the dark blue, but I'm probably going to miss all of this dark blue in the second color because I'm probably only going to use half of this ball when I uh, continue because I don't want this blanket to be giant. So if I used a whole other ball, I think the blanket would be too big for what I'm going for. So, yeah, there's a... Uh, it's going to start more with like a very little amount of the blue and then it's going to go into the dark gray, which I'm okay with. Hi, welcome to Baltimore. I'm Tabitha Soren. This is Kurt Loader and this is MTV News. <laughs> Today's top stories, a man was beaten to death in Baltimore, Maryland with an automatic cat litter thing and uh, wait, breaking news, breaking news, Post Malone still looks like a homeless McGruff the crime dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, graphics. It's gonna go do, 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 and the MTV symbol's gonna pop up. No? Mm -mm. Any 90s kids out there? All right. You should talk about your hat. It's finished. I have a hat. Do you remember the pattern? It's on my head. Uh, the uh, uh, Quilligator 5000. The photographer hat by Lavani Patricello. That's what I was gonna say next. Yeah. Tell me about your hat and how much you love it and all the things. Uh, it's a pretty good hat, man. I really like it. Um, I dyed it. And if you don't follow me on the, the it's social medias, I talked about it. You probably don't, though, because I'm pouring. It's a bunch of pictures of that one in there and that one over there, and that's about it. Beer. <laughs> and beer. And sometimes and I records. talk about my hats <laughs> and records. <laughs> Yeah, it's not worth a follow. Yeah. But that's like the best fitting hat. Yeah, yeah man. Right? It's you, pretty red. She uh, she fit it to my head. Like, you always go and you buy the little beanies at the store, and they're sewn together, so you got like the little points up there, and I hate that. And yeah, I got a custom thing made for my noggin. So, it's I like really like it. It's a hug for your head. It's a hug for my head. And it's super warm, because it's half wool. Merino wool and half alpaca dog. So alpaca dogs are mysterious creatures that live only in New Zealand, from what I understand. All right. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about... We had friends here. I said that in the video that you weren't here for. And we actually went to Mount Vernon, which we both had never been to. So it was really, really cold. <laughs> but it was, it was really cool. neat. It was a really neat video. I'm going to post a little bit at the end of the whole <laughs> vlog about um, of the sheep. And if you want to go see these sheep, they're the Hog Island sheep. And Evelyn from the Thistle Hollow talks about them in episode 6 of her podcast. So I highly, highly recommend going and watching episode 6 of the Thistle Hollow because Evelyn does a whole thing, a whole episode about the Hog Island sheep way better than I could ever do. So while we were there seeing the Hog Island sheep, John freaked out because he found... Oh, there was a black walnut tree um, on George Washington's property uh, by his sheep, and I stole a bunch of uh, black walnuts, and I'm going to make a, a George Washington black walnut dye something or other. We'll see how that turns out. You want to so. show them your black walnuts? Oh. <laughs> Want to see my nuts? <laughs> He's like freaking out. I had I had snacks in this bag for us while we were on the trip, and I had to empty it. And they look like yeah, it looks like poop. It does it might be poop? And maybe I, I just I mistook it for black walnuts. I don't think she pooped that big. Well, it could have been somebody else's poop. I don't know why I'm pulling out a bunch of different ones, like one's going to look different from the other. But hold on, let me get you two more. There you go. <laughs> look familiar, anyone? <laughs> Alright, so, uh, I'll probably take you on that journey of him doing some natural dye with that. So, and that's, a, yeah, that's where we are. I... It's going to be now a longer vlog. I, I re recorded no, way... No, it's not. It'll be the next one. You gotta come back and see. Hold, <laughs> don't hold your breath. Yeah, no, that's gonna come be on this one because I'm editing yeah. this and it's going up in like five minutes. Oh, right on. Yeah. So, bye.
Uh, oh, I had one. I had one. Oh, God. Nope. Don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye.